Okay, now let's go over some uh, topics on graphing exponential functions. And again, an exponential function is a function where there's a variable in the exponent. So let's start off by graphing an easy one like f of x equals 2 to the x. We'll put in some values for x and get out some values for f of x or y. If I put negative 10 in for x, I'd get uh, 2 to the negative 10th. Negative exponent means reciprocated, so I get 1 over 2 to the 10th, and 2 to the 10th is 1,024, so this would be 1 over 1,024. 2 to the negative second would be 1 over 4. 2 to the negative first is 1 over 2. Anything to the 0 is 1. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the 10th is 1,024. And if you plot these points, uh, these are some pretty huge points here. 1,024 is really, really high at an x value of 10, and it's very close to 0 at negative 10. Now we could plot those by hand, or we could go to the Excel sheet and get the idea of what these things would look like. And on the Excel sheet called EXP for exponential functions, uh, we have an area here that we can graph some exponential functions, and we'll be doing some curve fitting on this later. But farther over to the right, you get a lot more choices for different types of functions if you have those given to you. You can always graph these things in the any graph sheet as well. Uh, but I want to graph several and take a look at them. And the area that I'm going to uh, do this in is this right here, exponential functions in this form, uh, a to the bx plus c plus d. So let me zoom this up. And uh, here we go. So the graph of y equals 2 to the x, well, y equals the a is 2, the b, the number before the x, is 1, and the c would be 0, and the d is 0, and you get a graph that looks like this. Now, what's uh, the main feature about this graph? Well, it has a horizontal asymptote, this function does, on the left at a height of 0, and I think it tells you this right here. And it only has a horizontal asymptote on one side, that's the left-hand side on this problem, and then it just continues to go up. Now, it goes up very steep, but it does not have a vertical asymptote. You might think, well, maybe it won't even get over to 6. Well, it will. I mean, you can go out as far as you want to on this graph. Like, if I wanted to go out to 10, I could do that and we can see that we're up there pretty high. In fact, we can put a 10 in here for x, and we can see that we're at 1,024 high. When would we be at 2,048, or when would, would we be at 2,000? Well, at 10.96, so you can put in a y to get an x here, and you can start and end your graph right here. If I want to see it from negative 10 to 10, well, that's what that graph really looks like right there. And you can see that it's getting closer and closer to uh, zero on that. Now, what the uh, book is asking us to do is see what happens if we add a number to the end of it, and also what happens if we put a number uh, up here in the exponent as well. Well, let's take a look at that. Uh, for example, let's take a look at uh, the, a number at the end. Well, if I put a 1 on this, let me scroll down so you can see when I hit enter. Well, I tell you what, you're not going to see it real well at that at that viewing window. So let me change the viewing window, go from like negative uh, 5 to uh, how about 3. There we go. So you can see the graph so far. Here's at 2 to the 3rd is 8. Now n2 to the 0 is 1. And what happens when I put a 1 in this for the constant at the end? So let me put the 1 in here. And before I hit enter, let me scroll down so you can watch what happens to the graph. And that's what happened to it. Well, it just got jumped up one level. So everything that was at x is now, well, everything that was at y units high is now y plus 1 units high. So it was at 1, now it's at 2. Over here we were at 2, now it's 3. Over here we were at 8, now it's at 9. So a number at the end causes a vertical shift up and down, just like we did with the absolute value and the quadratics and so on. This is a vertical shift, and you go with the sign. Up here in parentheses, that's your horizontal shift, and that's going to tell you how far right or left you go, really by setting this bx plus c equal to zero. Let's say, for example, the c was two. And uh, right now we can see that we go through the point zero, two. Okay, and it has a horizontal asymptote right now at one because we did shift it up one. This is a graph y equals two to the x plus one, and the plus one is over here, not up in the exponent. And that was a vertical shift, and now your horizontal asymptote is one unit above the uh, x-axis. It's at one on the left-hand side. This is exponential growth. So let's see what happens if I put, let's say, a negative two in here for c. And I haven't hit enter yet. And this will be the graph of two raised to the x minus two, then plus one. Okay, so what does that minus two do? Okay, so watch it. And here we go. Now, 
if we were at zero, we were two units high. Now we got to go over here to two on the right hand side to get two units high. So it, what it did was it shifted my graph two units to the right. And again, you can find that shift right or left by setting the bx plus c equal to zero and solving it. If you set the b is one, so x plus a negative two or x minus two equals zero, well, x minus two equals zero when x is equal to two, so that's why it's two units to the right. If I had a plus two in here, it would move it two units to the left. And if I had, I don't know, let's say a three in here for the b, well, first of all, the bigger the exponent is, the steeper the graph's going to go. But it also causes a shift based on uh, solving this bx plus c equals zero. It's been shifted up one unit. You can't see it now because it grew so quickly, so fast, extremely quick. Just to clear out to three, it already uh, grew a lot. It's, um, let's just go out to about one or so. There we can see. It's growing extremely fast. And let's see, we can find the shift right or left by setting the bx plus c equal to zero. So 3x plus 2, if you set that equal to zero, you get um, uh, negative 2 thirds. And that's why it shifted to the left. The left takes care of the negative. So it's to the left 2 thirds. And that's how those things do on that. Now, if your uh, b here is negative and your base is bigger than 1, which is typically the case, if your base is bigger than 1 and your b is positive, then you've got exponential growth. If your base is uh, bigger than 1 and your exponent is negative, let's say negative 1, then you've got exponential decay. And you'll have a horizontal asymptote on the right-hand side at whatever it levels off to. And the bigger this number is negative, the steeper it's going to go. Okay. And let's see what else we have. Now, if we have um, a fractional value in here, it's just the opposite. We know that if uh, the base is positive greater than 1, Okay, if the base is greater than 1 and the exponent is positive, you've got exponential growth. How about if that base is something like 1 half? Well, now you've got exponential decay. And if the base was, let's say, uh, positive, uh, greater than 1, and this is negative, you have exponential decay. But if your base is less than 1, let's say 1 half, and that's, le and that's a negative, then you have exponential growth. So that's how, that's how you can do all your graphing in here, and you can always uh, use any of these areas on the exponential sheet, or you can always graph things on the any graph sheet and just type them in. So that'll do it.